Hey friends, welcome to Hot News. Got some good stuff going on today, so let's talk to you about it after this. Today's video is actually brought to you by ExpressVPN. My friends, you need a VPN when you're roaming around on the internet, either to stay safe from people who might wanna track down your data when you're at the local Starbucks, or to just keep you safe while you're browsing the internet to make sure nobody gets the deets on you, or potentially if you wanna appear like you're in a different country to access certain services like YouTube videos that get geo-restricted. ExpressVPN has fast speeds, consistently faster than other VPN providers. They have server locations in 94 different countries and 24 seven customer support, so you can get help whenever you need it. You got support for Windows, iOS, Android, Mac, Linux, your router, get internet protection no matter where you are, my friends. It costs less than $7 a month and it comes with a 30 day money back guarantee. We like to use ExpressVPN, especially when we have to go to Starbucks to do work there, when we have rolling power outages here in South Africa. It's great to know that we can log into our banking details, log into our YouTube channel, and nobody's capturing our internet over the local Starbucks Wi-Fi. So take back your internet privacy today and learn how you can get three months free by going to expressvpn.com forward slash UFD. Again, that's expressvpn.com forward slash UFD. You get three months free with a year package. Go to expressvpn.com forward slash UFD to learn more. Take back your internet privacy today. Do it, my friends. VPNs are a great invention. ExpressVPN, thank you so much for sponsoring this video. Now with that ad spot out of the way, let's go ahead and talk about AMD Navi coming to Xbox and PlayStation and Zen 2. All of that goodness. My friends, we have some juicy details finally coming out about it. We got a, uh, a code name from a well-known leaker in the tech industry. As you can see on the screen right now, the code name that we're going on here for the upcoming AMD APUs for the consoles is 2G16002CE8JA2 underscore 32 slash 10 slash 10 underscore 13E9. And you could be wondering yourself, what in the heck does that mean? Well, thankfully there's the little handy decoder that helps us figure out exactly what that means. You have the how to decode AMD code names. It's been around for a while. That's how we figured out some stuff for the AMD Zen 2 leak with the Ryzen 8 core and all that stuff back before CES. And now we have it here. You can see there's generation prototype, the platform, base frequency, revision not model number, number of cores and all of that good stuff. So essentially, once the code name is boiled down, what we see is that this is a Zen 2 based APU. So the brand new AMD information on seven nanometers coming with eight cores, a base clock of only one gigahertz. This is a little tiny pathetic thing, but a boost clock of 3.2. Keep in mind the PlayStation 4 Pro Max is out at 2.1 and the Xbox One X goes to 2.3. That's a pretty hefty improvement, almost an entire gigahertz faster than the previous generation. Thankfully, because it's on seven nanometers, it should be drawing less power, which means that it doesn't need as beefy of coolant solution to get, to get the same performance, so they can up the clocks on the same type of cooling solution, which means we're getting faster chips here. And not only are we gonna get the eight core Zen 2 CPU at 3.2 gigahertz boost, we also are gonna get a Navi 10 Lite GPU. Even though we have no information on what that's going to mean it's purported that it probably would be somewhere in the region of a GTX 1070 to 1080 level type of performance which is going to be pretty gosh dang good it's not going to be good enough for 240 FPS at 4k like previous reports but considering that is better than the average desktop that's out on the market right now if you get that for 400 to 500 dollars and this is the base level PlayStation or Xbox that would be fantastic and then we get a better one that's maybe in the 1080 Ti region of performance and it costs you know 600 dollars I'd be all over this that's a great performance hopefully for a great price and the Zen 2 cores those CPUs CPU cores, mm, gonna be delicious. And let's not just talk about console gamers. The fact that we might be getting an eight core APU, an actual eight core APU on the console side of things means that game developers probably will start optimizing for more cores in the PC versions of their video games. So everybody who picked up a 1700, hoping that all of those cores would go to use at some point, it's possible that with the new introduction of consoles, that will come to fruition. Well, we'll have to wait and see. It's just kind of hope and speculation at this point, but it's great indication that uh, the next generation of consoles will be powerful, likely going to be more powerful than the average desktop, not the best desktops on the market, but the average desktop, which is something pretty delicious. 
I'm hungry, I don't know if you can tell. That's where the, the food references of deliciousness are coming in. Speaking of AMD, let's talk about what uh, their CTO, Mark Papermaster, had to say about the upcoming Zen 2 Ryzen 3000 series stuff. Because when the original Ryzen stuff came out, there were some issues with Windows about the fact that it wasn't optimized to interface with the current our core architecture and the core complexes that came with Zen. However, apparently what Mr. CTO has to say is that even though there was some optimization stuff that had to happen with the first generation of Ryzen, that it's not gonna be so with Ryzen 3000. He says, as we go forward into this next generation with Zen 2 based products, we actually just make it easier because as you have cores going into a common IO die, it's the same core complex approach that we had before and you actually just have a very centralized path. So that's great. It doesn't look like we're gonna have any teething issues upcoming with Ryzen 3000. We'll just have things that works. Everything just works. That's AMD slogan. And bad AMD news, we already talked about this in the previous hot news, but now it's official. There's a press release as you see here. Sapphire officially has launched their 16 gigabyte version of the RX 570 used for mining Grincoin and other cryptocurrencies that, you know, need a whole lot of VRAM. Fantastic, 16 gigabytes, RX 570. Yes, in case you're interested. And then in case you're looking forward to the future, you're wondering what is Ryzen 5 going to be like? Ryzen 5000 series, not Ryzen 5, excuse me. Well, it appears that AMD is planning on moving to TSMC and Samsung for the five nanometer production of probably what would be Zen 3 at that point. So we'll get Zen 2 this year, Zen 2 plus next year, and then Zen 3 on five nanometers in 2021. And it looks like that's gonna be done with TSMC and Samsung who expect to be going into full high volume production of five nanometers in 2021. So it's a perfect match. You know, it's not a perfect match, AMD and Asmedia, because they're dropping Asmedia for the development of their X570 chipset. It looks like that they're gonna be producing this in-house rather than with Asmedia, who has produced all of the chipsets of the previous generation of Ryzen. Whether this is gonna be a good thing or it's just gonna be something that's done behind the scenes remains to be seen. Don't know if we're gonna get extra features with X570 over X470 or if it's just gonna be a, a refresh of the previous generation. We'll have to wait and see. Give us more AMD Ryzen news, AMD. We need to know. I'm not waiting till Computex. I need the rumors now. You know what else we need now? Cheap NVIDIA cards, but we don't know if we're getting them. Anyways, in yesterday's hot news, we talked about the 1660 and the 1660 Ti, that's a mouthful, but we have more information now about them, talking about memory speeds and a potential release date, so, and clock speed. So for the 1660, which is expected to have six gigabytes of GDDR5 or 5X memory, we're looking at about an 8,000 core clock, 4,000 and then you double it, with a 1,530 megahertz base and a 1785 megahertz boost, and it's gonna be on the TU116 die. But the uh, 1660 Ti is gonna have 6,000 megahertz because it's on GDDR6 with a 1,500 megahertz base, 1,770 megahertz boost, and also the TU116 400 die, but the board is gonna be a PG161, which is the same board number as the RTX 2060. So they're not gonna have to make new coolers for this. It's basically gonna be the same as with the previous ones. And they're expecting the cards to launch sometime around February 14th. So if you're a lonely gamer, you're gonna have a brand new GTX card to keep you warm that night. Obviously, this is all rumors still the WCCF tech in this article is claiming that this is more official information. We'll have to see if this ever actually produces anything. I still think the 1660 Ti is a horrific name that should never exist. And if Nvidia does it, then I will just have to fly a cow right into the sun. Speaking of more Nvidia things, we did a video on how they're bringing G-Sync onto FreeSync monitors. So basically you get, you, you get adaptive sync with Nvidia cards on FreeSync monitors. And there was an in-depth test done by Battle Nonsense a couple days ago. Ago, talking about the different input lag versions of FreeSync versus the G-Sync on FreeSync monitors versus just not having it at all. Some interesting results, so I highly recommend you guys go check out the video. I'm not gonna spoil it. Link in the card or in the video description. Check out the video. Then let's talk about more panel stuff, which is Samsung's 15-inch 4K OLED HDR panels expected to come to laptops sometime soon. Hot dang. That sounds like a lot of juicy deliciousness that probably requires an RTX card to power, but I want it so much. 4K, 15 inch OLED HDR, yes please. Add 120 hertz and then I'll pay whatever price you ransom me at. But you know who's gonna be paying the price for their displays? Apple, 
because they have another freaking issue with the MacBook Pros, the one that have the touch bar, the 2016 version. It's called Flexgate for whatever reason, because people like to add gate to the end of things. So you can see here, there's some uh, you know stage lighting going on where you have definitely discernible spots of bright light on the MacBook Pro screen. This is courtesy of iFixit showing it here. And apparently it's because the flexible ribbon cable that goes to the display is so fragile that it breaks down and causes the stage lighting effect to then eventually just be dead altogether. So Flexgate, you have a 2016 MacBook Pro, look for this issue, look for maybe fixing it. iFixit has a whole bunch of handy repair guides. Check it out at their site, you should do that. Speaking of AMD, Apple, Apple. I don't know why I want to call them AMD. Speaking of Apple, uh, they hate Nvidia because Nvidia screwed them over at one point. And apparently there's some just talk about, are we ever going to get Nvidia drivers on Mac OS? Nvidia is just like, yo, tell us when we'll flip the switch. And then even some people are at Apple are like, yo, we just need to tell Nvidia and then they'll flip the switch. We don't even have to do any work, but there's some higher up execs who really don't want it to happen. So it looks like we're not going to be getting Nvidia on Mac OS for a while. And that sucks for Mac, Mac Pro users because I mean, RTX 2080 Ti is the most powerful graphics card ever made. Why wouldn't you want that? Why do you have to stick with the Vega 56? This kind of sucks. Anyways, Apple and Nvidia don't like each other. And it's because Nvidia is the bad guy this time. How's it gonna deal for the supposedly modular Mac Pro they want? Exactly, no, that's the point. It's modular as long as you wanna put AMD cards. You could put Fire Pro, you could put Radeon 7, you could do Vega, you could maybe even do Navi when it comes out. Yay! No Nvidia cards, you're screwed. But you know who is compatible with things? Bad segue, Netflix. 147 million people freaking have the, the service. 139 million, excuse me. Uh, to the point where they actually say that their biggest competitor is, is not any of the other streaming services. They say in the US, we earn around 10% of television screen time and less than that of mobile screen time. We earn consumer screen time, both mobile and television, away from a very broad set of competitors. We compete and lose to Fortnite more than HBO. So there you go, Fortnite is the reason why people don't have Netflix. Blame your little cousin Jimmy. Dang it, Jimmy. <laughs> Dang it, Jimmy. And in case you ever heard of Machinima, which was a giant gaming MCN and channel on YouTube for quite some time, they pulled down all of their videos for seemingly unknown reasons. It looks like the company that bought Machinima was just like, we don't like any of this past work. We're gonna be doing new things. So goodbye, YouTube channel. We don't, we hate you. So in case you had any of your favorite series on that, on that uh, YouTube channel, rip. I, apparently there are some people who are attempting to archive it. Uh, I know that Epos, Epos Vox posted about it. I forget how to say his name. Anyways, he's posting about trying to archive it. You can check that out. We'll leave a link in the video description for him. Good job for all the archivers out there. Bad move on not letting anybody know about this. I'll say that much. But good news for uh, people who drive fast. You get to know on Google Maps that uh, you're speeding now because they're gonna be implementing speed limits onto the maps on the iOS and Android devices. So that, that feature that's been in ways forever, now you get it on Google Maps. Sucks for you, Tank. Speaking of new features, it's not really new features. Anyway, Samsung's launching their 970 Evo Plus NVMe drives today, and it looks like they're gonna be blazingly fast. So obviously the Evos are the lesser versions of the Pro Series, but the Evo Plus are getting a 53% improvement in write speed, coming in at 3,500 megabytes per second read and 3,300 megabytes per second write. That is crazy fast especially if the prices remain the same as the normal 970 Evos. It looks like the 250, 500, and one terabyte versions are available now with the one two terabyte versions gonna be available in April. Gosh dang, I want that. And then let's close it off with a little bit of fun. A surgeon in China used a 5G network to operate remotely on an animal using robot manipulation, also known as surgery. So there's a video basically of how it works. Thanks to 5G and its lower latency, it looks like that uh, remote surgery is possible. He was about 50 kilometers or 30 miles away from the operating theater and operated on the animal. Good job, 5G. And that's all I have for you guys for hot news today. Let me know what you think of the AMD APU. Let me know what you think of anything and everything down below in the comments. I need food because I'm Brett with the UFD Tech Channel. Don't forget to check out ExpressVPN at expressvpn.com forward slash UFD. Link for that will be in the video description. Hit the like button if you enjoyed the video. Get subscribed to stay up to date on all of our tech related content. I'm Brett with the UFD Tech Channel. You guys are amazing. Thanks so much. I'll see you smiling faces again in the next video. Love you too.